Overtime editor Ann Silvio talks with Scott Pelley. Scott, I think your story on 60 Minutes this week is going to have a lot of people across the country worried about their mortgages. Tell me, who owns the house today? Who owns this house that we're sitting in? We I don't I'd give anything to be able to answer that question. Nobody can tell you. No. Nope. Nope. For a lot of homeowners, it looks like it's not clear exactly who owns their home, right? Who owns the mortgage? That's exactly right. Uh, when Wall Street was creating these exotic mortgage-backed securities. These were the things that blew up in the mid-2000s and sent nearly the entire world economy uh, toward the Great Depression, too. They were taking the mortgages of average folks, thousands of them at a time, bundling them all together in these securities that got sold from investor to investor. But what we're just discovering now is that when the banks crack open these investments, if you will, and look for the paperwork on who owns what, it's missing. So this has created a bit of a train wreck in courts all across the country because they go in to foreclose on people and they can't figure out who truly owns the mortgage. So what did the banks do finding that these documents were missing? At some of these companies, a decision was made to recreate the documents. So these document mills sprang up, like the company called Docs, D-O-C-X, that we found in Alpharetta, Georgia. And what Docs was doing was creating tens of thousands of these assignment of mortgage documents. Well, Docs was hiring high school kids who were signing these by the hundreds and hundreds and hundreds as if they were bank vice presidents. Forging them. Forging the names of other people. The name is Linda Green, but on thousands of mortgages, the style of Green's signature changed a lot. And even more remarkable, Linda Green was vice president of 20 banks, all at the same time. You went on the search for Linda Green. She agreed to talk to us off camera. Wasn't she working in the mail room? At, at docs? At a certain point, but she was also signing documents as well. It, when she signed Linda Green, it was really Linda Green. But she wasn't a vice president of 20 banks and not a vice president uh, of 20 banks at the same time. Now, you did find someone named Chris Penley who worked in the same forged document mill that Linda Green worked in. That's right. Now, tell me about Chris Penley's job at this place. Chris Penley's job was to sign documents uh, and he would sign whatever name needed to be signed he, at that moment in time and there are 12 people around this table all signing these documents at the same time. All signing Linda Green? Many of them signing Linda Green. So you're Linda Green? Yes. Can't you tell? <laughs> Chris Penley told us that they had these documents stacked up like this on the floor all over the room. How many of these documents would you sign, say, in a given day? Averaged 4,000. You yourself? Yes. How do you do that? And after we did our interview, he pulled me aside and he said that one day when they were all signing these documents, he looked up to all the people around the table and said, one of these days... We're going to be on 60 Minutes. And sure enough, here we are. Now, just imagining this, and at times in watching your story, you don't know whether to laugh or just gasp in horror. It's, it's both of those things. As demand exploded, docs needed more Linda Greens. The documents they're signing, that, those are people's homes. These are the ownership documents underpinning the American dream. These are people who are about to lose their homes. Mm -hmm. The bank doesn't have the evidence to make that happen. So how do they solve it? Forged phony documents. Now, for the guy sitting at home watching your story who pays his mortgage payments on time and foreclosure is the furthest thing from his mind, um, why should he be concerned about this? I don't think we have been able to get to the bottom of what all of this means. The chairman of the Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation, Sheila Baer, one of the nation's top banking regulators, has called this problem in our story pervasive throughout banking across the country. It is probably many tens of thousands of mortgages that seem to have no paperwork behind them that establishes who actually owns the house. So if you pay off the mortgage after 30 years, are you going to be able to get the title for the house or is it going to be missing? When you go to sell your house, 
how difficult is it going to be to establish who owns the title and whether that can be transferred to another person. What can a homeowner do to figure out who actually owns their mortgage? I don't know if it's going to be possible for everybody to figure out who actually owns their mortgage. Most people are writing a check to a company that is a mortgage servicing company. You could write a letter or make a phone call to that servicing company and ask them who owns the mortgage. Mm -hmm. But if the mortgage servicer goes into the records and finds that your mortgage got wrapped up into one of these mortgage-backed securities with 10,000 other mortgages and then got sold and sold and sold again, they might not be able to figure out who holds the title to your house.